Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our lesson on convection currents. And so I want to do the summary here of what I have demonstrated to you guys. So if you did not see the first lesson, I'm going to put a link in the upper right. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. But let's go ahead and talk about what has been going on. And so let's think about it right here. This water is rising up, right? It's higher temperature, so it's going to rise up in here. And you could actually see that with the red food coloring. So mostly it went this way. Some of it actually went this way as well. You also can notice that this blue ice over here was sinking down as it melted. That was cold water, and we could actually see that happening, right? As this hot water rose up, it ran out of places to go, so it has to move off to the left or to the right. It has to diverge, we would say. It has to spread out, and that leaves a void over here, or not a pure void, but you could say there is less pressure over here relatively higher pressure over here, lower pressure over here. What that means is the higher pressure substance will rush in to fill that void over here or fill in the lower pressure area. So you have motion like this filling in the hole more or less left over by the water that's moving up here. Well, this water moves over here. It cools down because it's farther away from the heat source, but it's also with some cooler material over here and it sinks as a result, and the process continues, and you get a circular, what's called a convection current, moving like this. Now, the same thing happened on this side. It's just a little bit harder to see what was going on. So if I were to include arrows to show what I'm talking about here, the hot water rose up, and it moved off to the side. It diverged, and then that cooler water rushed in because it was at a higher pressure over here, lower pressure over here. It rushed in to fill that void. And then this water moved over here and started to cool down and sink. And you could see that in the video. And then this whole process kind of repeats itself. So actually in this system, we actually have two convection currents set up. They're also called convection cells. Now this, I would argue, is possibly the most important idea in all of geology, as well as meteorology and oceanography. So it seems like a simple idea, but it's a really important one. Let's imagine this was the Earth right here, and the Earth could actually move, and then you had like styrofoam or something on top. You could think about the styrofoam that would move over this way, and over here it would move this way, they would be diverging pieces of styrofoam on top of this water, right? Well, that's exactly what happens with tectonic plates. We have an earth that has diverging plate boundaries. There are plates on the surface of the earth, the crust and the upper mantle, and they get pulled apart or driven together. All right, so real quick, there are layers to the earth. This outer core is liquid, inner core is solid, the pressure is tremendous as you go deeper, but it's also much hotter as well. But as you get up here with the lithosphere, that's the crust and the uppermost part of the solid mantle, you could say. This makes up a tectonic plate right here. So there are about 12 major tectonic plates that cover the entire Earth. And you could think of them almost like floating rafts. This area right here, the mantle, it's kind of like hot, dense, silly putty. So it's solid, sort of, but it can flow over long periods of time. It can actually move. All right, so let's take a look at how this works with the different diagrams. So if you have these convection currents or convection cells set up like this, and like this, this is just like our diagram that we looked at. We would call this a divergent plate boundary. We have one plate right here, one plate right here, and they are being pulled apart by the motion of the mantle underneath the plates themselves. They're being pulled apart. All right, well, how about over here and over here? What do we have? What do we, what do we see happening? These plates are being pulled apart or driven together? What do you guys think? This plate and this plate. Well, they're being driven together. So these are not divergent plate boundaries. These are called convergent plate boundaries. So we're going to talk in more detail about this, but that's the major idea of a convection current or a convection cell and how to apply it into a geology example. I'm going to be doing a lot more lessons in this unit and in other units for a physical science class. I also do physics classes and even AP physics lessons as well. So you should see a link in the upper right to go ahead and take a look at the next lesson. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.